Okay, not feeling so well today, just a cold, but I fancy doing some low effort batch cooking. So today I'm gonna to make a big batch of a kind of a vegetarian ragu type of sauce. I've had a rummage through the fridge and cupboards and I think we've got enough to make quite a big batch. So I'm gonna make a big pot of sauce and then we're gonna use it in different ways. Since we're going for low effort today, I'm gonna to chop everything in the food processor. So I've just got some stalks of celery. Just trim off the tiny ends there. They can go in the stock pot or the compost. And just chunk that up like that to stop that going too stringy. Next, onions. I'm not gonna bother chopping those any finer than that. A red pepper. That's it, garlic. Well, since I'm not feeling so great, I think we'll have a fair bit of this. And those will just go in the food processor, just like that. Okay, that's good. Just chop that until we've got a kind of fairly fine texture. That's as fine as I would ever chop it anyway by hand. Olive oil in a pan, and then all that lovely chopped veg in there. Now, this is essentially a mirepoix or a sofrito or whatever you want to call it and I'm gonna fry that until it starts to caramelize. Not gonna bother washing up the mixer bowl at the moment. So a little bit of salt, a bit of pepper, and we'll just leave that to cook. Next, mushrooms. Big old pack of mushrooms here. This is actually a really cheap way to buy them. They're quite small mushrooms, and I'm gonna make an exception to my normal rule, and I'm gonna wash them. It's quite a lot of little bits of dirt in there. I'm not very worried about eating that hygienically, but from an aesthetics point of view, there could be a little bit of grit there. That's probably about half of my tub of mushrooms. So I wouldn't ever do that with wild mushrooms because they do absorb a lot of water. These, it doesn't really matter if they do absorb water, we're going to need some liquid in the sauce. As to why you're seeing me wash mushrooms this time, again, this is low effort and a foolish consistency is the hobgoblin of small minds. So I'm washing mushrooms because it's practical to do that today. We'll just check in on these vegetables. And still most of what's happening here is we're driving off moisture. So these aren't really frying yet. They're just kind of steaming in their own juices. So we'll just give them a little jiggle just to make sure nothing's getting stuck and burnt on the bottom. It's not. And we'll get on with the other stuff. Mushrooms into the food processor. And I am gonna find, even though I washed them quite diligently, there's still a few little bits of dirt there. So I'm probably gonna to have to do the thing that I would have done anyway, which is give them a little wipe. Not all of them though. And in some cases, a little trim. Same deal with those, I just whiz them until they're chopped finely. Pretty good. Well, that's quite finely chopped, much more so than I would have done by hand. But this is a vegetarian recipe, so this is kind of serving the purpose of the presence of minced beef or minced meat or something like that in this sauce. These vegetables have now started to caramelize. I can tell that because I can smell a difference in the sort of aroma that's coming off them. There's a slightly toasty caramel aroma coming off them, but also it sounds different. Mushrooms are going to go in there now, and that's going to stop this frying again, and it'll start simmering instead, but that's fine. I'm going to cook that for another five minutes or so. Nice big leek. Lovely seasonal vegetable. These can sometimes have a bit of dirt inside these leaves here. So what I do is I just slip them up nearly all the way, keeping that bit, bottom bit together and then I'll run that under the tap. And I can just get in there and get rid of any sand that might be lurking in the tops of the leaves there. Pretty clean anyway. And this one, I'm not putting in the food processor, but it's really easy because all I've done is another slit up there, so that's slitted into quarters. Just gonna lose that top bit, which might be a little bit dried up, and then slice like that. Now this is gonna go straight into the pot. This is not gonna get caramelized and fried down. 
because leeks cook down to a mush if you overcook them. So I do want to have some kind of almost visible parts of the leek still in the sauce. So this is not going to have any pre-cooking before it goes in the pot. All these vegetables in here are starting to cook now. Moisture from the mushrooms is driving off. So I've just put in about half of one of these tubes of tomato puree. And stir that, we'll get that in contact with the pan. Just so it has a chance to fry a little bit. Dried oregano, nice generous teaspoonful there. Sweet paprika, again, a great big heaped teaspoonful. Smoked paprika, not such a generous teaspoonful because that can be a bit overpowering. Okay, and now this paprika can burn really easily. So I'm just gonna get it in contact with the pan. We're gonna let it fry a little bit and then off the heat. Now what we got here is kind of almost like a like a vegetarian sausage filling or something. Let's have a little taste of that on its own. Already loads and loads of flavour in that. Now we need to assemble this into a pot to cook for a bit longer. That cooked vegetable and mushroom mixture is going to go in there, and I will deglaze the pan in a minute. My leeks, just chopped and raw. Three carrots. So one of those carrots is going to go in grated. The other two, just for a bit of variety of texture, and these are going to go in in little quarter slices. So just little chunks like that. Sweet potatoes, which I've washed and scrubbed. And we'll just chop off the ends because sometimes those are a bit iffy. And these are just going to be grated. And sweet potato can discolour really fast. So actually that's going to go in there just to help that keep its colour. I've got a tin of chopped tomatoes. The acidity from those chopped tomatoes will stop those sweet potatoes from going black. Right, we need to deglaze the pan and get some liquid in there. We'll just return that to the heat. So, deglaze liquid from the pan. Now for a little bit of substance to this sauce. Peeled wheat. I got this in the international supermarket in Portswood, Southampton. Brought it with me. About a handful of peeled wheat. Similar in concept to pearl barley, but made of wheat. And then textured vegetable protein, aka soya mince. If you don't like this, use something else. We're gonna have about a cup of that. Now those two last things I've just added in are gonna absorb quite a bit of liquid. So we do need to add some more water here. I'm gonna rinse out this food processor jug so that I don't waste that. No point wasting those bits of mushroom that are in there. And then we'll have another one, two, looks like maybe two cups of water. I'm going to mix that all together now, just so I can judge the liquid level. A bit more liquid. One more cup of liquid, and we can just see the liquid level now, around about there. Now at the moment, the only seasoning that's gone in there is a little pinch of salt with those vegetables when we first cooked them. So I've got this Marmite, this is the truffle one that I've had in the cupboard since I tested that earlier, but yeast extract, rounded teaspoonful, that's going to give us salt and glutamates to give this a more robust flavour. And I'm just trying to make sure that isn't in one big clump in the middle there. Because once this goes in the pot, I can't stir it. Okay, well, that might look a bit unpromising at the moment, but now it's got to go into the pressure cooker to cook for half an hour. That goes in there. I'm going to put that on the legume setting just because it gives a half an hour pressure cooking. Okay, cooking time is done on that. Let's open it up and see what we got. Yep, that looks pretty good to me. That looks like a bolognese sauce-ish. Well, what we would in the UK call a bolognese sauce, which is very different to what they call a bolognese sauce in Italy, apparently. Anyway, right, a little taste and we can adjust for seasoning and things. A little bit on the sweet side. I suppose that's the sweet potatoes and carrots and all the other vegetables are quite sweet. Could do with a bit more salt. And so that's going to come in just the form of a, a regular vegetable stock cube. I'll put about half of that in first. Because it's easier to put more in than it is to take some out. Okay, another little taste. 
yeah, I think it'll take the whole lot. Right, I'm gonna let that cool a little bit, and then we'll divide it up. So, a couple of portions of this sauce are gonna go in the freezer. This is a kind of vegetable bolognese-ish style sauce, but we can do different things with that. We don't just have to have that as a pasta. Probably one lot of that we will just have with spaghetti. The other lot, I might throw in some red kidney beans, maybe some chunky vegetables and mushrooms, and some extra spices, and maybe we'll have that with rice in the style of chili con carne, but chili con veggie. So those two are gonna go in the freezer, but we've still got at least half of this sauce left. Let's assemble today's dinner. I don't have any lasagna sheets, so I'm not gonna make lasagna. I'm gonna make just a pasta bake type of thing using this, uh, which says trophy. Trophy, eh? This might not be the right dish to have this kind of pasta in, but I don't care. Some of that pasta in there dry. There's quite a lot of moisture in these vegetable, in this vegetable sauce. So that will just go on top. And when I bake it later in the oven, that will hydrate the pasta. Let's have another layer of some, And that layer is gonna be courgettes. Not exactly in season at the moment, but they seem all right and they weren't too expensive. And I think what I'll do, I'll cut that down the middle. There, like that. I will just lose a little bit of the pith out of there. This middle pith bit can be a little bit watery. I'll cut that into thin strips. These will just bake as the dish bakes in the oven. So just go and cut them into ribbons. Of course, another way to do that would be with the potato peeler. Actually easier. Although I'm getting thinner ribbons like this than I did with that. So those are a little bit more chunky. So I don't know, might be, might be a reason to have it like that because there's a bit more texture. So we'll have a layer of courgette strips and ribbons and I'm not gonna be very, I'm not gonna try and be neat and tidy about it. I'm just gonna make sure that there is a layer there. Just peel it directly into the places where I can still see a bit of sauce. A little bit more pasta, a little bit more sauce. And I want another layer now. And this layer is gonna be spinach. Now I tend to buy unwashed spinach because it lasts longer in the bag. Once it's been washed and put away wet, it tends to rot in the bag. So I tend to buy unwashed spinach and then just wash the amount I'm gonna use. It's also a little bit cheaper. Let's see if that's enough. Now, I can squeeze that out because I'm not worried about keeping these leaves whole. Spinach that I've kind of wrung out over the sink. I'm only gonna go this way with the knife because I don't wanna make tiny squares. I want to make ribbons. And so my dish comes back. Spinach on top. Okay, I'm getting close to capacity now. And there's one more thing I want to put on here, which is going to be the bit that takes it away from being vegan into being vegetarian, but also it's not quite so lazy as everything else has been. I'm going to make a cheese sauce. And normally I just eyeball these amounts, but today I'm going to weigh it so that you can see how much I'm putting in. So 25 grams of butter, 25 grams of plain flour. And we'll just gently heat that. Now, normally I would have put the butter in there first, uh, but I wanted to weigh those ingredients to show you how much I need to use. So yeah, normally I would just put the butter in there, melt it first, then put the flour in. But I'm sure we'll get away with doing it this way. If I end up toasting the flour a little bit, actually that might not be such a bad thing. You can just fry that for a little bit and I can smell it getting kind of toasty now. So in with some cold milk. And that's going to be about probably 250 to 300 ml of cold milk but I will just keep that going and we will judge this by the thickness. Okay, you can see that's thickening already. It's gonna need a little bit more milk. So that's a total of about 250 ml of milk. That's gonna have a nice grind of black pepper and nutmeg. Nutmeg in a cheese sauce especially together with spinach. It's an amazing combination. Yep, that's good. Right, heat right down now. 75 grams 
of mature cheddar cheese. Now we don't need to grate that, we can just break it up into small pieces or cut it into cubes if you prefer. We can grate it, but the heat will dissolve that into the sauce. Tiny little splash of milk in there because I think that's a bit too thick. Okay, I've got it back on the heat now and I'll just gently warm that. We're not going to boil it or anything. We're just going to gently heat it until the cheese has melted in. If at any point it feels a bit too thick, a little bit more milk. Okay, I think we're nearly there. If it's got some little chunks of cheese in it, I don't mind too much at all because those will just be interesting little bubbly bits when we bake this. All right, and then this cheese sauce, I've just let it cool a little bit. Just gonna pour it on top of this spinach. I'll try and cover every single little bit of spinach. Pretty good. So I will be actually baking this today, but this could all be done the day before. And then it can be just chilled in the fridge and then bang it in the oven for 40 minutes or so just to warm it through, hydrate that pasta completely and bake and cook everything. So we'll do that a bit later. There is also some of this vegetable sauce, probably enough there to be a full serving for one person with some pasta or something. So that also can go in the fridge or freezer. So there we go, that was one little batch of cooking and we have the basis for three main meals at least. Maybe a fourth. I mean, you could spread that on some flatbreads and make kind of pizza type of things with it. And of course, just for me and Jenny, for the two of us, that's dinner one evening and probably something to go with lunch the next day. Right, dinner time. So all I need to do is take that out of the fridge and I'll put that in the oven. Gas mark, four and a half, five, somewhere around 180 degrees Celsius for probably 40 minutes until it crisps on top and it's piping hot throughout. Okay, well, there it is. That's going to have to cool a little bit before we can serve it. I'm going to serve up a portion of this here in the kitchen, just so we can see what it's like. There we go. Well, like I say, not quite the same coherence that lasagna has, but the layers are there. Let's get that to the table and give it a taste. A really quick taste test because everybody's waiting for dinner. Because this has already got your five a day in it, I'm just serving this with garlic bread. Mmm, that's pretty good. The pasta is completely hydrated and cooked. Courgettes are just nice cooked, but still with a little bit of crispness and firmness to them, which is good. And spinach and cheese sauce and nutmeg is just amazing. So there we go. That's, um, don't know what you call that, pasta bake thing. But yeah, that worked really well. And this leftover sauce is not just leftovers, it's incredibly versatile. So for example, a snack lunch the next day, a couple of muffins forked and split, just lightly toasted, topped with a spoonful of the sauce, a few little slivers of spicy salami, bit of grated cheese and under the grill for two minutes. And we've got these delicious hot sandwiches. And there are just so many more things you can do with this sauce. I'll put just a short list of these ideas on the screen. So I hope it's been interesting. Sorry about the quality of voice in this video. I'm off to drink some hot lemon now. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you again soon.